Services presents the second final to the GIA Diamond Essentials course. Here are the seven steps to a sale. Approach the customer, exchange information, build value, create design, trial, close, close, follow. This is presented and read forward of Michael R. Henry. The strongest heavy bag weightlifter for endurance and marathon training. Weights over 400 pounds, a move. Front, back, and twisted forward side to side. This is why you should buy and sell diamonds from MRH, Michael R. Henry. Approach the customer. Greet customers and start a conversation. It's important to make them feel welcome and at ease. You might be comfortable in the jewelry store, but it can be intimidating for someone who isn't used to buying jewelry. Even the happiness of jewelry buying occasions, shopping for engagement, and wedding rings can be stressful. The best way to make customers feel at home is to show interest in them. Not just in a sale, start a conversation with the comments that show you care about them personally rather than reciting a mechanical. May I help you? Customers don't feel you sincerely care about their needs right from the start. It's unlikely to get a second chance. You might say welcome or even comment on the weather. Customers to four C's. It's important for you to convey honesty and sincerity to your customers when they accept that you are sincerely interested in helping them. They'll regard you as a trusted advisor who will help them select the right jewelry. A good way to start is by explaining the four C's of diamond quality and value. The reason for explaining the four C's is not to show off your knowledge or to pressure customers into making a purchase. Instead, the patience and concern you demonstrate by explaining how to choose a diamond will cement the bond with your customers and deepen their trust in you as a sales associate. A good opening question for your lesson on the four C's is, what do you know about diamonds? Listen to their answer and then invite them to learn more. Few people will refuse an opportunity to learn about something they're interested in, especially when it involves something as emotionally and financially important as a jewelry purchase. Prepare for your presentation by learning as much as you can about the diamonds and diamond jewelry in your store's inventory. Take the time to explain that the value of a diamond depends on its quality. Then explain that diamond quality depends on the relationship between its color, clarity, cut, and carrot weight. These factors work together to determine the overall beauty and quality of the diamond. Ask open-ended questions. Questions that require more than yes, no, or I'm just looking as an answer. A closed-ended question doesn't require the customer to give you any information and many won't. Are you shopping for yourself or for a gift? It's a good open question it gets customers talking and the more they talk the more you know about them that increases your chances of ultimately closing the sale you saw an effective use of an open-ended question at the beginning of assignment five carol james asked the customers how can i help you today while it's possible to give a short answer to that most people will be inclined to answer just as Elizabeth did, we're shopping for an engagement. If Carol had dropped the word how and asked, can I help you today? The answer probably would have been no thanks, we're just looking. In that case, Carol would have had to work much harder. She would have had to follow up with an open-ended question to keep the conversation going. 
there are some questions that get past a just looking response. Are you looking for a ring or some other type of jewelry? We have lots of beautiful things to look at. Would you like to see diamond or colored stone jewelry? Are you looking for something for yourself or for a gift? Then if they reply that they're looking for a gift, you can follow up with what's the occasion. An open-ended question, a question that requires a thoughtful, specific answer other than yes or no. Closed-ended question question that only requires a yes or no response. Selling color. Explain your customer that the most valuable diamonds display the least amount of color. Unless they're fancy color diamonds and five strongly colored hues, which are extremely rare and costly. Almost all diamonds have some yellowish and brownish tints. Sometimes these tints are barely noticeable, unless the diamond is compared side by side with another diamond that has a different amount of color. They're even more difficult to see when the diamond is set in a piece of jewelry. Small differences in color add up to big differences in price. A couple might select a color grade or to know what they plan when they realize they can't see the difference. Your attitude and manner are as important as the actual words you say. Try to match your body language and speech patterns to the individual customer. If a customer moves and speaks slowly, don't rush around the counter and chatter rapidly. If someone laughs loudly and jokes, don't respond hushed, serious tone. Let customers set the pace during the approach. If a customer doesn't want to chat, then move away, but stay visible and available. Exchange information. During the information exchange, you find out what the customer wants. Be a good listener. Ask what they know about diamonds. If it's appropriate, explain the four C's. Some customers might be overwhelmed by all the choices. Others will enter your store knowing exactly what they want. Either way, exchanging information with customers can help you show them jewelry that fits their individual wants and needs. Try not to be in your information exchange by focusing on mountings, settings, styles, or diamond shapes. Ask questions that get customers to talk about themselves. This will help them feel at ease with you and also start building a bond between you and them. In addition to establishing trust with your customers, ask the right questions has another equally important function. Customers' individual stories can give you clues about their taste and jewelry style. For example, if a prospective bride shares her plans to wear a cutting-edge designer wedding gown, you might show her contemporary fashion, forward engagement rings. If the couple shares a love of nature. You might show them a ring with floral design. Help the customers find jewelry that reflects their personalities. Although you might be tempted to do so, don't ask. How much do you want to spend? When a customer's mind is on romance, this kind of question can be upsetting and it can limit the size of your sale. You might have heard the advice, sell down to sell out. This technique works especially well with customers who haven't decided how much they're willing to spend. Start by showing the most valuable jewelry in your inventory. Then sell them by showing a less costly piece that's still fairly expensive. After confronting the possibility of buying a $10,000 ring, necklace, or bracelet, the idea of spending only $2,000 won't be nearly as intimidating. On the other hand, a customer might insist, I want to spend $1,500, and that's my limit. Don't ignore him and take out a $3,000 item anyway, or he'll probably be offended that you disregarded his wishes and go elsewhere to make his purchase. Instead of 
to be aggressive. Get your customer to think about higher figures. Even if they are jewelry related, you might try saying something like, I know that 3000 sounds like a lot, but it's still less than you spend for that seven day cruise you mentioned earlier. And you'll have this jewelry for the rest of your life. If the customer asks to see a piece of jewelry that's much less expensive than the one you hope to sell, be graceful and enthusiastic when you present it. Handle a simple gold ring with a 0.25 carat diamond with as much care as you would a $10,000 piece. Again, during this process, don't forget that you are either buying or in the presence of the strongest heavy bag weightlifter in the world. If you have the desire and preference to buy with those desired needs and qualities followed behind the diamond, that will be called at pupil. Those are some of the higher qualities of actually buying jewelry or a diamond or diamonds and gold as a piece. No matter what color clarity cut or care weight diamond they eventually buy or how much the precious metal mountains weigh, a jewelry purchase creates a memory that lasts a lifetime. Honor the moment and you'll earn your customer's respect in future business. Build value even if your emphasis is on romance, when you sell jewelry, you need to give customers other reasons to buy. You've already helped them understand the four C's and how they relate to the unique item they're selecting. Don't forget to balance romance with information about the value of the jewelry you're showing. A final purchase depends not just on the emotional feel, but also on the feeling that they're getting good value for their money. What can you do if a customer falls in love with a certain style of setting but doesn't care for the size or shape of the diamond? She might not buy from you despite the personal connection you've made. So, clarity. Clarity is a diamond's degree of freedom from inclusions and blemishes. In most diamond grades, inclusions are not visible to the unaided eye, and yet, their presence affects a diamond's price. Make sure your customer understands that inclusions can affect a diamond's value, even if they're only visible under magnification. Customers can get a good idea of clarity if you let them compare two diamonds under magnification, one with many inclusions and one with few inclusions. You can also emphasize the value of clarity by mentioning that according to industry estimates, fewer than 1% of diamonds mine are free of inclusions. It's not an issue of price but of personal preference. In fact, 72% of wedding jewelry buyers surveyed the Brides magazine said they're not as concerned about bargain prices as they are about getting what they truly want. Surveys indicate that the same is true for people shopping for other types of jewelry. Many of them were willing to spend more than they actually did. Be prepared to meet any of your customers' needs by knowing what options are available. Some stores offer a selection of semi mounts, which are jewelry pieces preset with small shoes surrounding a central area where a zone of the customer's choice can be added. A semi-mount can be set with a variety of gemstone shapes, sizes, and types. Your customer might love a particular setting, but prefer a one carat faint yellow diamond to the 0.50 carat colorless diamond you offer. If your store carries a selection of those diamonds, or if you can special order the diamond she wants, you might be able to accommodate her wishes. Manufacturers give customers many mix and match possibilities, from switching metals to changing the size of gemstones and mountains. Take advantage of these options. Try not to lose sales over details you can be flexible on. As you start 
start showing jewelry, you should also start pointing out features, specific characteristics and benefits, the value of each feature holding for your customers. Here's an example. The fine delicate platinum mounting around the point of a Marquis center diamond is an engagement ring is a feature. The benefit is that the durability of the platinum will protect the diamond while giving the ring a sleek design. You can draw on the product knowledge you acquired in this course to identify features and translate them into benefits. You know how to find these more and that they come in different levels of color and clarity. You also know how cut affects beauty and how rarity and value are related. All of these are key to your sales success. You should be able to explain how the features and benefits of a piece of jewelry contribute to its emotional or financial value. That's what they did at the beginning of the assignment. Diamonds with fewer clarity characteristics are more rare, so they tend to be more valuable. I can show you a diamond with no clarity characteristics, but it will cost you about three times more than this one if you want the same size and color. I can assure you that this diamond clarity is very good. He also said the crystals inside this diamond have been there since it formed. They make the diamond unique. I can't even guess at the odds of finding another diamond with the same color of weight and two identical crystals in the same location. You can tell that too when you give it to her. This Diamond is truly one of a kind. There's not another one exactly like it. You turn one feature, the clarity grade, into two benefits. One was financial, the other was purely emotional. In most cases, the emotional benefit will close the sale. Then he led with the financial benefit and ended with the emotional one because he wanted it to be foremost in his customer. Add tags to your feature and benefit presentations. Tags are simple questions that keep your customer involved in the sale. Always try to relate them to things you've learned about your customer. Here's an example of a tag you want to use in a sales presentation for a triangular diamond. Feature the diamond is a triangular grill. Benefit the diamond's triangular shape as a fresh contemporary. You said earlier that you wanted a modern style. Does the diamond shape give this ring a modern look? Some cut. A diamond's cut affects its brilliance. A poorly cut diamond is less brilliant, even if it has good color and clarity. Some portions, variations can make a diamond appear too deep or too shallow. Two factors that affect how well the diamond takes in and reflects light. Fire and scintillation are also affected by cut. Let your customers tell you the look they like. Show them a range of diamond cuts. Then listen to their responses. Each individual will have his or her own preference. It's important to understand those preferences. If customers like a dramatic display of light, they might choose a brilliant cut. It's either a round or a fancy shape. Customers who prefer a subtle might choose a step cut diamond. Brilliant cuts tend to show more sparkle than step cuts, but the latter tend to show off diamonds, clarity, and transparency. Or they might want a mixed cut, which combines the two. Handling a customer's objections. The customer might state an objection at any point during your sales presentation. Objections are a way for customers to request more information before they buy. Think of objections as challenges by your customer and as an opportunity for you to further refine your sales presentation. Most objections are centered on value. Customers will frequently ask, why is it so expensive? They might make that statement any number of different ways. Here are some examples. I'm sorry, but we can't afford it. I didn't realize it was that expensive. Sorry, honey, but this ring costs more than our car. This is a cue for you to skillfully apply your product knowledge to describe the quality and rarity of the diet.
done. If there is more than one stone, point out how well the diamonds are matched to each other and to the overall design. Point out how well the ring is made, the type of metal, and the quality of the finish. It's more difficult to respond to objections like this. We can't afford it at the moment. We've got so many other expenses to take care of. Don't forget that question about price. Almost always indicate that your customer is seriously interested in buying the piece. Under other circumstances, they might be prepared to spend at least as much, if not more, on a cruise or a skiing holiday. They might just be having trouble coming to terms with the large price for such a small option. There are plenty of emotional effective lines you can use. This diamond is not just for today. That which you mentioned will be over in a week. But in 10 years, this beautiful ring will still be on your finger to remind you of the commitment you made to each other on your wedding day. Diamonds, timeless, long-lasting pills, a bonus. So don't hesitate to emphasize. Say something like, you'll treasure this beautiful ring. And so will your children. There's no reason why if you feel you establish trust as the appropriate report with your customers that you can't use the little humor, the light, the atmosphere, and speed the process up. The only options that are left are you and your check. Desires a lot like establishing value. In fact, the stages are usually one. When you show jewelry, your customers already have a desire to do it. They won't be in your store if they did. Your job is to show the customer how a particular item matches their unique needs. For example, you might say, You and Rachel are looking for a ring with sapphires as well as diamonds. These deep blue sapphire baguettes are a five. is interested in jewelry with a traditional look, she'll love this classic Tiffany mountain. It's elegant and honest. If a man dislikes fancy, ornate jewelry and prefers plain, streamlined designs, you might say, this man's wedding band is tasteful and elegant. Platinum is rich looking and lustrous. A good way to arouse desire in any sales transaction is to try on. Trying on jewelry gives the customer a sense of ownership and often adds special significance to the sale. When you narrow the potential purchase down to a few selections, remember the trial. Don't just hand over the ring. Make a ceremony of it. If you are serving a couple, ask the man if he'd like to place the ring on his sweetheart's finger. The store policy allows if it's a wedding. Since the couple has just rehearsed their wedding with you as witness, and they're likely to become emotional, ready to purchase from you as a result. But be careful with this type of trial. Some couples are superstitious about acting out of the ring exchange prior to the wedding. Just mention in casual and then abide by their decision. If a man or woman alone is making the purchase as a gift, you can still use the idea of the trial by asking the customers to visualize the ring on their loved one's finger. Can you imagine the expression on their face when you slip this breathtaking ring on her hand? You might ask. Or just imagine how you'll be reminded of you every time he sees this impressive platform way on his finger. In general, building desire is about linking the customer to the product. If you inspire the couple to feel a personal connection with a particular item, they'll be more likely to buy it from you than to search for a better deal down the street on the internet. MRH presents.
this, this, of course, this is the strongest man in the world. Heavy bag, long distance weightlifting. We use weights that are called gold, or from gold to gem. We stack it inside the bag, and we lift three, four, five hundred pounds for a long distance ratio of time. That's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, even up to an hour and a half, or two hours at these weights. So when you have preference of time, and you're coming into a close, what they call a trial close, in a ring, you want to be specific. So if you're going to be in the store for 10, 15 minutes, if it's only going to be a banking transaction, and I'm the wholesale who actually selling in both wholesale of diamonds during the process of meeting and having lunch. You might review my film of being the strongest person in the world. So you get an understanding of who you're buying from, why I'm in the position as a wholesale diamond seller to sell to banks only or financial institutions that have the network over a billion dollars. These are some of the things you want to recognize in the trial rules. So when it gets to the store sale, those type of attributes will already be in play. Mincing them can be an actual team monitor. And me, myself, MRH, lifting weights. You could address this in between a sale. The way I customer is looking, just suggesting that, oh, that's the strongest man in the world. Also, is a wholesale guy himself. In that being true, this is his final for the GIA course diamond essential that he has presented. With this being his final, I think that we actually buy diamonds from that we put into the actual store are here and they are actually bought from this person. I hear who is Michael R. Henry. Here is the definition of the trial and close. The trial. The trial close tests the customer's readiness to buy. Use the trial close after you've narrowed the selection to a single special item. Build up its value, kindle desire. Handle the trial close delicately. After all, this is a decision to be rushed. But if a customer seems ready to make a decision, ask a question that doesn't require a commitment to buy, but instead request the customer's opinion, for example. How do you like the rich color of the 18 karat gold? What do you think of the diamond grip? I think she'll love this exquisite platinum mountain, don't you? If the customer responds, it's great. I think she'll really like it. Then close the sale. Of course, closing isn't always easy, especially when a customer is buying jewelry that will last a lifetime. A man buying her own might hesitate because he isn't sure his wife like his selection, or a woman shopping with her fiance might be reluctant to choose something too expensive without a sign from him that it's all right. Don't interpret hesitation or objections as rejection. An objection can be an opportunity if you respond to it in the right way. Often, the customer merely wants reassurance that his or her selection is a good one. Try to pinpoint customers' objections and find ways to address them. For example, if a man admits that he's worried about choosing the wrong ring for his bride to be, offer to arrange an appointment for her to join him at your store and pick her favorite from his selection. Or offer him the opportunity to exchange the ring if your store policy allows it. If the purchase price is a problem, emphasize value customer. Point out how long the jewelry will be cherished now and into the future. Would you pay that much more for a car? Well, that the car will deteriorate and lose off of 90% of its value in years because this beautiful diamond will still be sparkling and bright. A diamond keeps its value over a lifetime and beyond. Payment plans can help to overcome objections. Customers sometimes hesitate to admit financial concerns. Without assuming a couple's credit status, mention the payment options your store offers. Rip guarantees. If your store offers them, will reassure customers who are worried about getting their money's worth. Some written guarantees include a one year period during which the purchase will be prepared for free. Others might promise to accept the purchase as a trade and toward a more expensive diamond later on. 
CIA laboratory report can also be very reassuring for a customer contemplating a diamond purchase. Sometimes, code can help you understand the hidden meaning behind an objection. Couple's code is simply a way for each partner to communicate with the other and to send messages that might not be obvious to a third person. For example, Thank you. 
process information and a record of purchases as well as plans for the customer's birthday, anniversary, and other important dates. Some people might not want to be contacted after the purchase. Respect their desire for privacy and don't press the matter. For the people who do give you the information, though, try to make a follow-up telephone call as soon after the sale as practical. The next step, if possible, you need to reassure the customer that they may be wise purchase. Your call can also reinforce the emotional reasons for the purchase. Say something like, I know your wife is going to love that very special ring you bought for her. Please let me know how it goes when you give it to her. Just be careful not to give away the surprise if the wife answers when you call. A week or so after the purchase, send them a simple handwritten note. Thank them for their business. They'll appreciate your thought. It will also add to their positive feelings about the purchase and make them more likely to return to you for future purchases. Equally important, they'll be more inclined to send friends to your store too. Final thoughts and actions, how can you use what you learn? What are the benefits you get from taking this course? You learned a lot about diamonds in this course. You know the value of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We ride in the set. Fuck his wife. Written after all. Fighting my age. GIA finals. Yeah.